On this episode, we talk about stupid questions, integrity, and relationships on social media. Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 109 of the Ask Gary V Show. Uh, India, let's get into, uh, actually before I get into that, it's been uh, really fun to uh, get the wonderful feedback on social of how many people have missed the show. We were on a real roll there for five or six weeks, so not having a show for an entire week uh, definitely uh, built up the demand for episode 109, so I'm as equally fired up to deliver the NBA Finals have been phenomenal. Stefan was super tough on me in basketball today. I heard my, are you, what, what's this meme, Steve, that you're up to on like trying to create a fake show for Stefan? Is that what you're on? Uh, or is this a real show? Earlier? Yeah. No, yeah. That's, that's the EP that he's gonna be uh, Why don't you show Steve while he's talking? Stefan has an album coming out. Um, <laughs> you want to follow him on Twitter for more information. Cool. Steve has a Reddit competitor website coming out in three months as well. Let's <laughs> get into the show. <laughs> Nick links, bro. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> oh my God! We have to talk about that at some point. Yes. All right. From Edward. I mean, with the fan base. That's a lot of black and white for you there, D Rock. All right. Eduardo asks, I don't understand why I barely see Gary V in my Twitter feed, but all over my Facebook account. Eduardo, great, great statement, uh, great question, uh, and, and the answer is because of the attention graph. See, what I don't think people understand is Twitter's fire hose, and this is notwithstanding Chris Saka's amazing rant that I, I haven't read, but I, so I can't even say it's amazing, but the amazing feedback to his amazing rant, uh, and he's one of the great investors of this generation, a good friend of mine, and I'm dying to read it, and Chris, I promise I will read it, uh, probably in late August when I'm with my family, um, you know, while they're sleeping and I'm being a good dad, but I have a chance to read. Uh, I think Twitter's fire hose is just noisy. And I'm tweeting away, and, and I think I even double checked that one to see if you were following me, and you are. Um, it's just busy, and there's a ton of shit going through your stream, and you're just not seeing it. And now that I've changed my profile picture, and you don't see the pink in the corner, you're really missing it. So, you know, Facebook just has more attention, as does Instagram, which is the best at this game. Snapchat at some level, especially because you're holding it, but like, using stream terminology, the streams, Instagram one, Facebook two, Twitter three. A lot will jump in and leave comments on this episode of, no, for me it's Twitter and I get that people that have done a better job keeping a small group of following down. Um, but as an overall big data play, Facebook is winning that game. It's more obvious. I, I just think, you know, even like the UI, UX, Facebook posts are bigger. Uh, I just think that, um, I think Twitter's noisy and I think the reason uh, I picked this question, because I did forward this one to you, India, is because the question is the point that I'm trying to make, which is um, you're noticing it more because you're noticing it more. Think about that. Christopher asks, you get questions all the time. Some you like, some you hate. Do you feel that there's such a thing as a stupid question? Chris, um, I, yeah, I think, you know, I, I'm not gonna go cliche here. I, I, I think there's probably an enormous amount of stupid questions. Um, you know, there's a lot of stupid people um, with uh, stupid points of view, um, but nobody gets to be the judge and the jury of that stupid. What may be stupid to me is not stupid to Stefan and vice versa, and so thus, uh, I think the judge and the jury, the person that makes the decision whether it's stupid is making that decision. And so, you know, I mean, I think, I think 99% of the questions people ask me are stupid at some level, truthfully, especially when they're the things that come most natural to me because people aren't asking me questions of biophysics or of the weather or traffic theory or just, you know, I mean like actual traffic, <laughs> uh, not web traffic. You know, like people don't ask me a lot of questions about things that I'm not knowledgeable in and so, um, uh, I think all of us, when we have a depth of knowledge of something, um, uh, can think things are, are stupid because we know them well and others don't. Um, stupid's an ugly word, by the way. I hate that goddamn word. But the, the, the energy of the question is the, 
there's a human that decides if it's stupid or not. And I think the politically correct answer to this question is no. You learn from it all, in all that and I'm into being PC. I think, you know, I'm sure some of the, the homies here thought I would go that route with this answer, but um, not India, but DRock maybe. He gets tricked sometimes. Um, and so, um, and so that's that, guys. Yes, there are stupid questions. Oh, this question is amazing. Go ahead. Ryan asks, my bro's been dating a girl for two years and she still refuses to acknowledge their relationship on social media. Red flag? Ryan, your brother is in deep Any relationship that is two years old where one of the people in the relationship has not acknowledged it publicly on a social network platform is up to some scandalous Period. End of story. There's nothing else to being said there. I, I don't want to hear that you like to keep it private on the DL. Like, scandalous. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. Tommy Lasorda. Let's do it. This is Tommy Lasorda. Gary, I want to ask you, how do you keep your people motivated? Tommy, thanks for the uh, great question. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, being one of the great managers of all time, this answer is going to become very easy to you and very natural. I think you'll get it. Uh, I, I think I spend a lot of time thinking about motivation, and I think the key for me is I try to motivate uh, in a couple ways. Number one, by example. I think my actions will always speak louder than my words. So how I carry myself, how I interact with everybody, how, how I live myself, like, live my life as a man. I think really matters as a and as as an executive, as a person. I think everyone's always watching. Um, but I also think I equally try to reverse engineer every single individual person, right? They're just all different. They all have different KPIs, different objectives. They're in different parts of their lives. Some are married, some just had kids. Some are trying to make more money. Some don't want to have four roommates in Brooklyn. Like, so they're grinding. So like, everybody's got a different thing. And I think what's important for me to motivate is to do a great job listening to what makes them tick, both when I have the few moments with them in person, like Alex, get over here for a second. So, like, let's do a real life example on the Ask Gary V show. Alex, what, what what motivates you? What are you What are you excited about? Like, what, what excited about? Yeah, like, like what, what? Yeah, like, what motivates you in life? Oh. Uh, I just like doing cool. Sh- All right, like, that's it. Like, pretty much. Uh, I want to like be successful and just do cool. Sh- basically why I'm here. So you know, cool man. All right, get out of here. So you know, Alex is easy. He just wants to do cool. Sh- so that's easy. We do tons of cool shit. He's check, he's good, he's motivated. And you go on and on and on and you try to figure out, was that like he was scared that he was on camera and is that the real answer? Like are they gonna really tell me the truth? Do they, they never tell me the truth usually up front, few and far between. And so it's a constant you know, behavioral, HR driven, reverse engineering what they care about. Like Indy and I had a pretty intense conversation about her future ambitions of like, we're, we're, yeah, remember you wanted to be the head of social media for museums and things like that. I took that very seriously. Like I know these things about my peeps. This is long before India was on the inner circle of the, this team. Like, like, like I remembered it better than you did. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Seriously, let's. It did, it's true. So like, I mean, so I take enormous, like, <laughs> You don't get to be a great all-time leader without being a great all-time leader. So there's a lot of work that gets put into being good at what I do, and I'm very, very up to the challenge. And so it's predicated on an enormous amount of listening, which is why I'm such a paradox, because boy, do I f-ing love to talk, but the amount of listening that I'm actually doing always surprises people when they start going a couple of layers deeper. So the answer to your question is, I motivate Tommy by figuring out what every single person is ticked and wired like and what makes them roll and I also recognize that that changes every single day. And they have four to seven, 12 milestone things that happen in their lives which will change the trajectory of their ambitions, wants, hopes and dreams and I need to be prepared for every single one of those. For all of them, forever. Dylan asks, do you still believe that there's integrity in the communications industry? Dylan, I want to too, and I think the answer is there absolutely is, but I think that there's integrity, there's very little integrity in, 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 very, in every single market. Advertising, politics, sports, music. Like, the, you know, the reason integrity is so attractive is it's so hard. It, it's far and few between it. And, and integrity is defined differently by everybody, and I think it's interesting to watch. I actually think society is giving people more room to be flawed, which is uh, intriguing. I think the level of integrity, it, what in, the way integrity is 
viewed upon today, I think is in a much better place than it was by society, let's say 50 years ago, because I think we're now factoring in that nobody's perfect and we're making mistakes, even by standards like drugs and, and relationships and cheating, like, like, like intense stuff. I think there's an interesting evolution and I, and I think that th- you know, that's allowed for a little bit more gray and a little bit more, if you're really on your high horse, uh, creating a scenario where you judge integrity. But I think, I think it, in a lot of ways, there's plenty of integrity. I think there's a ton of integrity out there still. I think, I, I, I've been saying this a lot lately. I, I said in another video, are we gonna bang out that video that I did in, uh, just earlier today? Which one? We did four. No, I know, the last one we did. That's in, the Twitter one? Yeah. Yeah. Stefan's working on it. Yep. In there I say, or me, no, I think there was a different one. one. It was in another one, I screwed up. But the, uh, I'm a big fan of this thing that's on my mind right now, which is you find what you're looking for. Um, you know, I see integrity every day, every day, and I think it's because I look for it, uh, and I look half glass full. Like this is Niagara Falls to me. Like this is a very full glass and I think that plenty of people can see, can see plenty of what's missing. I think that's as much on you, my man, as it is on what's actually happening in the marketplace. Yeah, this is a good episode. Felt good about myself. Went deep. 109 was a deep episode. <laughs> just show DeMeo just for kicks and giggles. <laughs> let's go, no, the camera will, let's find him. DeMeo, the camera will find you. Don't try to, you know, don't try to, don't try to hide. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Tomorrow, you get to ask the question of the day. Oh, boy. What are you going to get AJ for his wedding? <laughs> you're, you're asking the entire Vayner Nation? Uh, no, I'm asking you. No, this is not me. Oh, you messed oh, up the question. Right. Oh, but you know what? We're me. keeping that. What are you getting AJ for his wedding this weekend? <laughs> you keep asking questions, we'll keep answering them. <laughs> Yo. Are you going to do calls tomorrow on the road? I'm willing to. Give me some brief, yeah, give me like an hour to get like, yeah, speak to Liz. I want the kids set up, like I don't, like give me some breathing room. But I'll take like an hour in there, you know?